All right, so of course you're listening there to Shabo. And joining me in studio, we have Director of the Institute of Cultural Studies at the University of the West Indies, Dr. Sonia Stanley Naya. And thank you so much for coming in. Always a pleasure. We had asked you for some of the significant songs for you in the dance hall space, and you chose this song. Is it the song or the singer? Both, I think. Why? Shabba, in because particular. Because when you listen to the words, put it down to the key and turn it in a donkey, it's all like nonsense rhymes. No, but for me, it is the way in which the the word sound power is activated through whether it is rhyme or reason, there is a potency to the lyricism of people like Shabba that has to be acknowledged in the Tell context of dancehall. Break that down for me. So lyricists, people who can string words together, whether through partnership in a studio, writing in their own you know writers as people who can do this kind of thing they are very notable writers in our space shaba i think had a good run and in fact he's still recording as far as i'm concerned had a good run in terms of presentation of really catchy lyrics for us in dancehall first phd in cultural studies at the university of the west indies dance hall and cultural studies scholar researcher author no head of, as i said of the cultural studies unit now how did you get started on this path at all? You know, Dion, I used to play school in my backyard. I would leave school and I would go home to play school in my backyard. And it was later in life that I realized that I was always destined to be a teacher. So when I'm asked, what do you do? I'm a teacher. But you're not a teacher really of high school history or geography. A, no. You're teaching dance on. <laughs> Who, who, who sets out and says, I want to do a PhD in dance hall? So after a while, I realized that I really had an interest in research. My first degree is in geography, and I went into sociology and social psychology, and then into cultural studies, which is my disciplinary home. And I realized I had such an interest in dance, such a love for dance hall. Why not investigate the ecology of dance hall? And that's what I set out to do. Most dance hall fans will satisfy themselves with going dance and learning the latest moves and the latest songs and whatever you wanted to delve that much deeper. Is it that you saw a gap in the, in the, in the academic work? Yes, man, and inquiring minds want to know. I found not only a gap in the academic scholarship on dance hall, but also a gap in the number of persons in Jamaica who were interested in studying ourselves. So I set out to be one of those very much documenting, observing, and preserving knowledge about who we are as a people. Did you find skepticism though? Because I think I remember Carolyn Cooper saying that, that when she first started to do that kind of research, whether on the language or the music, people are like, but what is that? People how, still how, think how is that academic work? People still think I'm playing. When I go off to reggae festivals <laughs> or I go off to dance hall events, you I take my students on field trips to dance hall events. I was just at Weddy Weddy okay, this I, last I week. I want to be in your class. Yes, come. <laughs> It is conceived as something that is wasting time. It's play. Ministers of government have, in fact, engaged with this as well. I remember Damien Crawford very clearly saying that he had to go and immerse himself in the, in the business of entertainment to understand what's going on. And people thought, a joke, you're wasting taxpayers' money. But the fact is, we now know that the orange economy or the cultural and creative industries, these are trillion dollar industries. And the very business of entertainment in Jamaica which is what we teach about in the Institute of Caribbean Studies, is very much something that we have to be investigating in, um, as a people. How have you found that kind of recognition changing from when you first started? I think you got your PhD about to what, 2009? 2004. Or 2004, until today. Has it changed significantly or is, that, is there still that condescension, that looking down? It has changed significantly. I would say that there are parents now who are still skeptical, but there are parents who are much more open to mm. having their, 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 their children. I, I come can hear the conversations the... now. You're going to study what? Yes! <laughs> and worse, you still can't be a DJ. You still can't be anything like that in Jamaica. You, you really doing? ought to be aspiring to be a, lo a lawyer and a doctor. But there are parents now who do not hesitate to allow their children or pay for the education surrounding entertainment and cultural enterprise management, cultural and creative industries, or music and performance studies, which are newest program in the Institute of Caribbean Studies. How, where, where do your students go? So many of them are, are occupying, in fact, let me just say, and I'm, this is something I'm very proud of, that the Institute of Caribbean Studies has graduated 21 PhDs since we have started the PhD program in cultural studies. And these people are placed right here. RJR group has Dr. Dennis Howard 
on the um, board of directors and used to be in charge of radio. Dr. Lantonet Steins, these are all people who are prominent in their fields. Dr. Maria Smith, who is at UNESCO. And some of these people, I'm, I'm naming mature people who have come back to academia to engage with something that has been a part of their practice in life. And then we have younger students, Karen Madden, who has completed a, 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 a master's in cultural studies. There are lots of students who are now engaging with the very traditional forms, whether it is religious, music, um, dance, all of these things that are our cultural assets that we take for granted here. I was looking at some of the, the, the topics that you research and one of them is a the movement of reggae worldwide through festivals. How is that a research topic? That's on like um, Sunsplash in Japan and this one in Europe. Uh, how, how is that research? You know, there are 326 reggae festivals in my database. And what I've been able to map is the way in which Jamaicans are very much participating in or have a percentage of the market share. So how many Jamaicans are booked on the festivals? Where are these festivals located in terms of a geographical spread? What's their ticket, pr ticket costs? So you, you get a sense of the projection in terms of the budget. What's the larger economy in relation to, to reggae festivals? And then that allows us as a people to be able to project what kind of audiences would we want to be tapping into for marketing our very own products in Jamaica? There's a lot when you look at the whole geography and economy of reggae. That's are, one of the things I'm interested in. Are we bringing in it from that home? Because you're seeing it happening out there. We are having a discussion as to whether the reintroduction of reggae sound splash is going mm -hmm. to put too many reggae festivals on our calendar. That's what I'm hearing discussed. Foolishness. Here. There can't be too many reggae festivals on our calendar. In fact, you know, one of the things in, in discussion with some of our colleagues on campus, in some months in Jamaica, December, we had 19, 20, 21 stage shows. Now, how many do we have? Sting is gone. We hardly have any. In fact, in December, I think it's only Stone Love's anniversary that's still in December. So we have a reduced, uh, a skeletal product in terms of entertainment when exactly it comes on to market both is. dance hall and reggae. We don't understand the value of what we have. And I'm suggesting, you know, one of the, the, the initiatives that I'm really lauding is the, is the return of sun, Sunsplash. I really hope that it becomes a big thing again in Jamaica. There are people who, the nostalgia, the memory around participating in events like Sunsplash, they, they never leaves them. But of course, we have a whole generation or two that have come of age since then. So mm -hmm. does Sunsplash then have to carve out its own niche? Can it replicate what is being done on the other festivals? It has to be rebranding itself, obviously, to reach the audience now. But the good thing is that we are now in an era of a reggae revival so that there are young people who are in touch with the, the very uh, ambassadors of reggae in this time. These are the people who are on the international stage and that's part of what I'm researching. That the Chronix is the Janine. Janine is right on tour. She is actually going to be at Womex right now as we um, represent Jamaica through the Minister of Culture, Gender, um, Sport. Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport at Womex for the first time, a delegation going. Janine is a part of that um, kind of um, delegation. And so the, the fact is we are now in a time when Sunsplash can return. And that's because of the word that many of us have been putting in to, 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 to rebrand and to, to situate Jamaica's entertainment culture on an international level. We're going to go to the break with a Bougie Banton. Tell me about why you chose him. Well, that might be obvious, but tell me anyway, why you chose him as one of the significant figures. Bujo has I mean, the number of um, number one hits. Bujo has um, outstripped Bob Marley's record in his time as a young artist, came on the scene, has not lost his passion, went on vacation, let's say, came back. Bujo is still my favorite artist. Okay. And what about, you sp spoke of coming back. How has he, what should I say, how has he positioned himself since coming back? Working hard. Because the expectations were so high, right? Working hard, just the same. He has now almost completed his Long Walk to Freedom tour. He's working on an album, has a, a, a record deal, and he's now positioning himself to take on the work that he started. Do you think he can come back? to where he was, the, the till shallow there's, days. There's, the nothing, there's nothing like coming back to anything. You move forward to progress and even mature in your practice. And I think that's where Bojo is now, that he is, is, a, is a more mature um, artist. 
he has some things to say, not only musically, but about the society he has come back to find. And I think all of that will come out in the way that he's producing music now. Okay, well, let's go to break and then we'll come back. We'll continue our talk with Dr. Sonia Standing Nayo. We're back in a moment. Come and meet me at my front door Tonight, tonight Let me take you on a love tour Tonight 